<laughs> what is up, Grizz fam? That was a little bit pressing, but that's okay. Is what it is. We are here after a Grizzlies loss, 123 to 120 to the Los Angeles Lakers. And as you can see, we're a bit disjointed tonight. I am in a completely different setup. My camera didn't even work tonight, so we're using the mic, Matt Cam. Uh, my title is wrong. Welcome back, BC. BC didn't even plan anymore. It's been about two weeks since I got to watch a Grizzlies game, and I got to show up and see a little five-on-eight action. I'm sure we'll get into that tonight, but appreciate everyone coming out and joining us. As King Meek says, hit the button, everybody. You're here? Why not? We're all friends, for the most part, unless you're wearing uh, white and black stripes, then uh, we're, we're not really friends tonight. But other than that, we have a probably short show planned for tonight. About to wrap up the season, but we're going to make sure it's a good one. Daniel's not here. I'll be your host tonight, but you always know I am never alone. And with that, I will bring in my co-host, who is the host for the Daily Grind, one Mr. Luke Tino Hatmaker. Oh, no. We are completely disappointed tonight. Are you like in an '80s workout video? Right? Is that what we're doing? Uh, this is an Ohio Lady Hoopers jersey. <laughs> oh, hold on, I forgot the music loops, dude. We are all over the place tonight. This guy kind of be yeah. the most professional show that we ever do. Clearly, it but was man, the most I professional officiated performance. You know, it's it's fine. Yeah, we will get into the talk of the officials yeah. tonight. Um, you know, it's pretty crazy how the free throws were pretty close until the game was. Close in the fourth quarter. It's kind of <laughs> on the line. Crazy how that happened. Um, but, you know, it's Lakers. It is part of their strategy to use the free throw line um, early and often and always mm-hmm. much more than their opponents to get a win. But, hey, anyways, we're here tonight. We're not just going to talk about that. Luke, seriously, you look like you're doing a full 80s workout video right now. The headband, the tank top, I love it all. You have wristbands on, too? Yeah, well, see, I was ready with only eight players. I didn't know if they were going to need me. And so I was just – I was ready – if they needed a, if they needed a ninth guy, I could get to Memphis in three hours, and I can at least make some. I can That's make exactly at least one I free. Sort of leaning towards. <laughs> it looks like, good though, man. Yeah, like it that, looks I'm good. Ready. Listen, we're gonna have to have Luke to bring the energy. Uh, I am back, King Mix. Yes, I am back again. Meeks. Um, but we, uh, I was in the Colorado wilderness for basically two weeks, which means that I have a full goggle tan right here. Um, yeah. My legs really work, but we are back. And this will actually be my last game of the year. Will not be making it Sunday. Unfortunately, I have a previous family event. It is a baby event, so there's no talking our way out of that, folks. But we're going to have a good time. Um, all good, all good. Anyways, Luke, that game was sort of depressing. I'm not even going to pretend like I've watched Grizzlies basketball for the last week. I've had a cell service. What's going on? Tell me what's looking like with the Grizzlies the past week. Uh, well, what's looked like the Grizzlies is these sort of eight dudes that are playing are playing their minds out. They're they're playing literally to the best that they are capable of playing. Like they they, they I don't know what else we can get from these dudes that are on ten day contracts. Like I don't know what else. I just don't nothing. The answer they're taking Le- LeBron James to. I just I don't know what else they're supposed to do. I don't. <laughs> hey, the game's five on five tonight. There's a chance. Yes, 100%. Can, right? <laughs> um, we'll see. The uh, the free throw disparity with the Lakers. I do want to ask you this because I mm-hmm. do have a bunch of family in town. I was really only able to catch the second. Yeah. Is the free throw thing a free throw thing or is no. it a fair basketball game? Tell me. No, it's, tell not me. it's not fair. Okay. Um, and you can even see it. Um, they had a really good angle for that last not call um, mm. <laughs> where you just kind of, you see it from the side and Brevin just kind of breaks it down where he's like, look, the knee, the knee is contact there, contact there, contact there. And they're like, they called that earlier. And, and it's, it's just clearly not a fair, it's not a fairly officiated game. And even to the point where there's not even technicals going out when there should be technicals out. Like if one of our guys did what LeBron did at the end, he would have gotten teed up and ejected maybe like, like, I can't wait to see what Jenkins says. I bet Jenkins is going to go off tonight. I know we need the signature Daniel Jenkins presser, but uh, I'm not going to look that up. So, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, I won't have that one tonight. But the one that got me was the call under the Lakers or the Grizzlies basket where 
LaRavia got pushed in the back by Hachimura. Oh, yeah. It yep. doesn't yep. get called. And the same official that is looking right here at it then yep. makes the foul call on, I think, a good one or something like that. And I'm like, come on, man. It's like – and we don't get in this very often, but we are a bit of a betting show. Like all of us like to yes. bet. Um, I'm in Utah, therefore I'm a little bit deprived. Um, Daniel loves to bet, which, by the way, if you haven't been keeping up with Daniel on Twitter, he's doing the shows with Alan Bell right now. Dude is yeah. making a lot of people a lot of money. So go check all that out. Um, I think it's at Daniel Greer. He's pretty basic, but he has a lot of good things about it. So go follow him. But I, I bet on tonight's game. Did you bet? I can't. I'm in, I'm in Utah. There's oh, no bet. I money. did. I <laughs> bet on Rui because I hate myself. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> that's a, I can't root against my team. But, man, I don't know about these. I will say all the stuff that's going on with betting – in sports, I love that it's going around. I love betting. I love. I hope it gets legalized here soon. When you have these professional leagues having these betting sites as sponsors, and then you see stuff like that, it just opens up a lot of cans of worms. I'm just, it's dangerous. It's just dangerous, and that's, I'm not going to make any other speculations other than it's dangerous, and it's a reason that, like you know, I look at that and I'm. A lot more hesitant than I used to be on money lines. Yes. Over unders. Yep. Anything on those lines, totals. I'm all playoffs now. I'll be honest, there's part yeah. of me that's pretty scary. But all I have to say, it was pretty gross to watch that fourth quarter. Again, I only watched much mostly the second half. They're pretty gross, free throw line disparity. All that to say. I actually like to fight from the grist tonight. To be honest, I thought they played really well. What are your thoughts as the group itself? Obviously, the game went how the game went. Little ugly. We have thoughts on it. Grizzlies wise. Grizzlies what's wise. Grizz- well, you've been gone. Um, Jake Laravia yeah. has just been putting together kind of a pretty fantastic case for himself, which is r- real funny. Mm-hmm. It's real funny how he's doing that. Um oh, here we go. because he's Nate Laravia. <laughs> Listen, I've, I've told you guys, I'm LaRavia's biggest fan now. I don't <laughs> I just, I, I love the guy. He's playing like more of a badass than I thought that he was capable of. And, and that's just kind of nice to see, you know, like I thought he was a derpy, slow mm-hmm. white guy like myself, <laughs> but uh, he, he, he looks like he's not, he's not derpy apparently. Well, that actually is one of the things that I have on my list. So I haven't been able to watch Grizzlies basketball, yeah. but I did catch up on highlights as soon as I got back to cell service. And the first thing I see is Jake LaRavia crossing up, I think, Isaac Okoro and hitting a fadeaway yes. side up three. And I'm like, okay. And then I look up tonight, and what do you have tonight? Do you have 20 – GG only one hit 30. He finished with 20 – Eight points, so he was close to the 30-point mark again. Did we jump the gun on Jake LaRavia? I think I did. I, I mean, I'll be I, – I'm – I. if someone wants to prepare a big old actual crow for me on a plate, I'll eat it. I'm a man of my word. I will do it. I love crows. They're my favorite animal. I will eat it and carry that <laughs> weight with me the rest of my life. Um, because I I thought I, – I, I was ready when his shot – started coming and going. I was, I was done. <laughs> like when he wasn't making threes for that little bit of time, I was, I was just done. I didn't care. And I'll be damned if he's not playing like a complete ball player. Now it's really strange because I didn't think that he would even, I didn't see him as this when we drafted him as a guy who had multiple tools. I just saw him as a shooter, you know, like, and I just, wow. it's, it's really cool to see him have other parts of his game. Well, he only has three rebounds tonight, which is one of the things he's been great at. I guess one thing he's done a lot is he's found a nose for the ball. Now, part of that is every time you grab a rebound in the pan against the Lakers, it's a foul. So that's part of that. But all he comes out with six assists tonight. He's playmaking at the end of the game there. He's, Mm -hmm. I mean, he's taking LeBron to the rack. AD steps up and then he's able to shoot out. Like, it's like, what is going on with this? The whole game, the whole game. It was weird. It's just crazy to see. And, I mean, it's one of those things where partially, yes, this is a bit of a revelation. Like, I'm kind of like, man, what, what is Jake LaRavia this? Is this what we actually had? Are we all about to eat crow just like I did with Santi when that first yeah. happened? 
the other part of me, I'm going to be completely honest, is like, ooh, beautiful roster spots. Opening up as Jake Rabia plays himself in the trade conversation. I, and I don't know. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just afraid to get hurt. My little heart can't take believing in we Jake Rabia. But, dude, I've said this pretty much every show I've done for the past month and a half, which is I have nothing but good things to say about Jake Rabia. Yeah. Which – at the beginning of the season, I was turning the games off when he went into the game. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. It's just crazy to see. But um, I do think Jake is making a case for himself as an NBA player. All I that to say, a, I, well, I, I still just don't thing. think it's Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just, on the same it's page. It's, it's going to be with someone else. And, and good for him because – he, he, if he gets going to play like this, he deserves to have a moment, you know, have a team because this kid's fun to watch and this kid won't see minutes next year on this team, unfortunately. Well, and he's playing with freaking brass balls, dude, <laughs> which is yeah. like, well, the, that's the he thing. Was and, again, we're Memphians. Yeah. That's what we love. Like, is when you're sitting there and it's like, you're telling me this pasty little dude is going at LeBron James <laughs> and, oh, and, like, had him. <laughs> and here for it. And playing well, yeah. and he's crossing up Isaac Okoro. Who say what you want about Isaac Okoro? The thing he's had on his defense, and I'm sitting there like, man, he keeps playing well. So I got nothing but good things again to say about Jake Laravia. And with we do have a bunch of people blowing up the comment section. Goons in here. We always knew Goon was going to show up and talk about how great we played since Jaron didn't play. Go ahead and get your Jaron Hayden in there, right there. We got Austin is in here. D'Angelo, always good to see you guys. Make sure you keep filling up the comment section. We have yes. two shows left. I'm going to include this one. Two shows left. My personal last show of the season. We got balloons for Luke. It's having a bit of a trippy night over there. But I don't know how I did that. Keep filling it up. This is what makes the show go. You guys are what keep us going. That's the reason we can show up every night when we're winning about 20 some games this year. So keep going. And make sure while you're at it to check out Streetcars of Memphis. Streetcars of Memphis is the Fish Grizz 901 sponsor of the Grizz comment section. Now, the comment section, we don't have a name for yet. We're still workshopping that. But one thing we don't have to workshop is Streetcars of Memphis coming in and taking care of us. From regular maintenance, then all car modifications, speakers, lights, lifts, wheels, they do it all. Guess what? They are still doing a Grizz 901 special. If you want to get your oil change, just use group code Grizz901. $55 regular oil change or $65 full synthetic oil change. That is an oil change at cost. Luke, I don't know about you. Not a big car guy. Yeah. I don't do oil changes because I don't want my car to run. I'm afraid I'll break it. Street Cars of Memphis will take care of that for you, for me, for anyone at cost. Keep saving take place at Street Cars of Memphis. Check them out online at 901scn.com or call 901-323-3332 to schedule your oil change maintenance or customization service today man king of transition is back baby but seriously keep blowing up this comment section what we're doing and one thing i do want to bring up here if i can get it back is scotty pippen jr dude we Ravens looked awesome there's like no one other guy we're definitely gonna talk about tonight because i want to hear your thoughts on specifics with him yep. scotty pippen jr i've said for a while i think put himself into a roster spot i hope for this team Absolutely for an NBA team. What are your thoughts on Scotty? Uh, the beautiful thing is we don't need him to, though, because he's still got another year on his two-way. Like, we don't have to do anything because because mm -hmm. he's all, we've already got him. But I think he's he's maybe the second best point. I mean, clearly Derrick Rose is better, but, like, Derrick Rose can't stay healthy. He just can't. He can't. It's really, really hard for him to stay healthy for – the majority of his, of a, of a full, he's just not done it. And it's been like three year, years in a row now, you know, it's becoming nor the norm. Like right. Scotty Pippen Jr. Is he might be the, the hardest working dude on our team like in terms of hustle. Like that dude is diving at every single ball. Like I feel like he's diving for balls that aren't even basketballs that are in the stands. The dude is just going everywhere. He and it's almost like the friend that's you want to be like, bro, calm down, man. Like, thank you, but you're going to hurt yourself. And he did, you know. It, well, I, it, Russell punched him in the head, right? Or what happened? Yeah, he got hit in the face. Yeah, I, it's but, just like 
He's one of those dudes that when he goes down, I'm like, yeah, he actually might be hurt. <laughs> hurt. <laughs> like, hurt. Happening. Yep. Austin, I'm not bringing that comment up. Just know that. But, yeah, every time he goes down, it's like he actually does get hit in the face because he's all over the court. And, I mean, the one thing we saw from him is defense, mm-hmm. which is an undersized guard is pretty, pretty impressive to say the least at size. Two, <laughs> he's facilitating and he's assisting. Mm-hmm. And he's doing all that. And then the one thing we've seen take place now is he putting the ball in the hoop at yeah. volume, right? Like he was, yes. He's been a consistent kind of like tie a C type player, right? Like kind of going to yeah. be efficient, going to facilitate. He's going to put the ball in a hoop at a good like rate. But now he's doing it with volume attached. And it's like, okay, now he's showing he can do it on a bigger scale. Now that's never going to be his NBA role, right? That's never going to be what he does. At the same time, if you can do that in this minutes and you're taking this out of these minutes or making the most out of them, all of a sudden there's something for you right there, right? There's something, okay, you can get a different role on team. Yeah. So I think he's like a back on guard. I've fought him many times since like his first game with us, and he's only proven me right. Well, and, and think the way that – I think the way Derek Rose's contract and his two-way is, we, they've got a year where we can just – it's fine. We can still have D. Rose on the roster and and mm-hmm. have him on the roster and just play him more. Because he will be the, I th- it's clear he's the backup point guard. I mean, I yeah. think he should well, be. Well, and the other thing is with him on a two way, it gives you the opportunity to keep playing this out, right? You get to keep playing it out next year, see if it's a flash in the pan, see if it's not. I think he's shown us plenty to say it's not a flash in the pan, right? Like, I think he's looked awesome every chance he's gotten for the most part. Um, but it gives you a chance to do that, make more peripheral moves. You can free up mm-hmm. roster space. And then once you get to crunch the next year, if you say, hey, this is real. Now you can free up roster spots for him. You can free up some space. Um, but you're not forced to do that, and you can take care of the more pressing things in the meantime. But Skate, I feel like I come in here game after game and just like, he's impressing me. And every every mm-hmm. way he possibly can have a backup point guard. Which leads me to one other guy who I have to eat a little bit of crow on because I was pretty tired of watching it. And now he's – I still don't think it's meant to team. But when you're getting 17 rebounds as a point guard – Jordan Goodwin. Oh, Jordan Goodwin, dude. What's the deal with this guy, man? I don't. It's it's so strange because you look at his, you look at the box score and you're like, God, he shot the ball a lot, and then and then you're like, oh, go, oh, but he got all the boards. It's cool. It's fine. You can. He was seven <laughs> of twenty three at shooting the ball, and it's like, okay, man, like you know, you know, if you, you know, maybe don't, but I don't want to slow him down because good God, he's the only person that rebounds on our team, like. I don't know what to do. Like it's he's at well, the top. He's rebounding like crazy the past month. It's been insane to watch. I mean, he's just always in the mix. And it's one of those things where I feel like as Grizzlies fans, Memphians love guys like that. Yes. Love guys that play like that. At the same time, I'll be honest, I see a, a spot where he fits with the team and what the team needs. You can't be a point guard with four fouls. He had four fouls at the end of the game. That's you can't be doing that. It's really hard to do. Well, on, well honestly, if you're, you didn't, if you're a grizzly and you didn't foul out tonight, I'd like honestly good oh, yeah, you because they were looking for a way. Poor Trey James, by the way, that would have rebound man. if he was allowed to rebound, but he wasn't. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit petty tonight uh, on okay. that note. Tom That's, petty? Uh, uh, no, Nate Petty. Okay, Nate just Petty. petty. Ooh, Nate just plain petty. Cool. Um, yeah, I uh. That was pretty gross to watch that. But I do want to give props for props for due. He was getting double jerry as a point guard. He's in the mix. He defends really hard. And love the way he plays. I just don't see a fit. But I want to give him praise for playing really well. Same thing we're doing with Jake. I mean, the, what I love about this entire situation is these are dudes that no one would have ever seen play otherwise, most likely. You know, like mm-hmm. I, Goodwin got waived by Brooklyn at the trade deadline before we picked him up. Like these guys would not have been seen and now they're getting seen and almost beating the Lakers on Friday night. You know, it's just like, it makes me happy for these guys because good one will get a job next year. People are going to, people need a point guards that can rebound, you know, like his skill set right. will be utilized somewhere. Well, a lot of these guys are playing their way. Like we were saying with um, Jake earlier onto an NBA roster. Same thing. Me and DG have talked about Trey Jameson a lot. It's things where I'm like, I don't know if he's going to be a good fit for the Grizz. I don't know if he fits the timeline with what he needs to do to develop. I love watching him play his way into the NBA. 
which is yes. what he seems to be doing. He develops more and more every night. Honestly, they had to file him out because he's given AD issues tonight. I said AD did mm-hmm. have a great game. AD was a great game. Um, but it's kind of easy. Trey James is the only guy you have to go up against as a big. Mm-hmm. Um, but Goodwin's another one that is like, he's doing a lot of stuff that a lot of NBA teams will like. Very Lamar Stevens esque. Lamar's not doing yes. anything nuts night in and night out, but he's doing all the little things that make you want to have him on on the team, right? So yeah, awesome to see that. A lot of these guys doing. Can we a lot talk of about a stuff. GG shooting fifty percent from the field and fifty percent from three last over fifty percent. Last thing I was going to bring, <sighs> bring up. He's on, I don't and this was the last guy I wanted to talk to you about because I wanted to ask you really specifically. Mm-hmm. GG Jackson next year, we're going to have job back. Mm-hmm. Bain, Smart, Clark, Santi. Um, I think there's a list of literally 13 guys um, that will be on the <laughs> roster next year that play tonight. Uh, um, 12, because Yuda Watanabe's on that list. Uh, Yuda, I know. <laughs> Yuda. <laughs> Poor um, Yuda. <laughs> maybe not next year. <laughs> um, but uh, with GG, I've been one of those guys that's like, man, yeah, he's he's got it. He's got it. I'm not a GG doubter at all. I just throw him into the mix. It's like, hey, like uh, we're going to start GG Jackson next year. He's ignoring a lot of things coming back. But he keeps making the case. And then we'll get to more to like just the basics of that in a minute. GG Jackson next year. What do you think? Where is he? Uh, I think GG Jackson continues shooting 53% um, of his threes at volume. <laughs> Uh, Luke Kennard is going to become really expendable and you're going to have Gigi Jackson be the first guy off your bench because yeah. that's, that's like Luke needs to be shooting the ball 13 times. That's what he needs to be doing. And, and he, he just won't, or he wasn't. And I think Gigi would shoot more if we asked him to, like he, he is. And I think they're going in now, man, like every shot he took tonight, I was like, that sucker's going in. Like it was just, he, 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 right. It just looks really good coming out of his hands. That, that last rainbow three he took, I was like, oh, my God. That, that shot got altered, and it still hit yeah. every part of the rim before it get bridled out. I was so <laughs> close to going in. So close. Dude, but he's he's not just hoot, hitting the threes. Like, no. the moves he put on Rui at the end there, <sighs> get to the bit. When he has an offseason to develop all of that, man, he it's just going to be next. It's just going to be next level. So, I mean – and I love Gigi. I think as part of like Grizzlies fandom, I would be considered a Gigi doubter because I'm like, let's just yeah. cool the Jets on this 19 year old kid with all these other guys coming back and seeing him like take a spot and be like a real go to guy next year. But the more you watch the dude play, the more it's like, man, if I was him, I'd be like, what else do I need to show you, Nate? And I'm like, I got nothing for you. It's just, it's only the fact he's 19 and he's still so raw. Yes. Which is, here's the beautiful part of that. He's either going to be a part next year because he's already that going to be that awesome, or two, the sky is the absolute limit. If you're yes. that good and that raw at 19, it's just unbelievable what he's doing. But I think, and that brings me back to the other part of that, which is, dude, how awesome is it just to have Gigi Jackson playing this year? She was not supposed to. No, he was not supposed to. I don't think any of us. I think he might have been one of the big question marks for at the beginning of the season. I mean, we were like, what, what, what is this kid? Is he going to, is he, you know, like we didn't know about the personal reasons why he fell so far in the draft. It's like, what's going on here? I, he was, wasn't supposed to get this kind of run. And I don't think he was supposed to be this good. He might make an all defensive team like, or an all rookie team. Pardon me. <laughs> like not defense. He might make an all rookie team. Like the, well, and first off, let me pull this up. Um, Daniel, if you have enough time to comment on the show, you should have been on the show. Goodbye. And then, as Anthony Sane was saying, zero reason to relax on Gigi. And like I said, I have zero reason to argue. I have zero reason to argue at this point. I'm like, the dude just keeps being off. The only yep. the only thing is that thing in the back of your head where it's like, hey, he's 19 years old. But at a certain point, it's like, it doesn't matter anymore. And I'm like being completely out over that bridge. Like, I've been sort of sitting on that fence, riding that fence. Dude, I, I think I'm about all in on Gigi Jackson. And yeah, not just I, as an all in on GG as a player, 100% all in on GG as a player, 100% G on in GG as a contributing, like massive contributor for this team next year. Yes. He like, keeps showing like, it uh, every night. He keeps showing that he's going to need to be a part of this, an imperative part of this rotation, like 
like a piece that is needed to beat other teams, like these teams. He's going to be needed to beat the Lakers. He's going to be needed to beat the Nuggets. Like we're going to need him when we win a championship, go, like going our our way there. We're going to need we're going to need his skill set, like no doubt. Well, and then you got, I mean, and we got a big guy, kind of sort of echoing what you said, D'Angelo, Austin, both talking about Luke um, come, getting gone. Here's the I, thing. I love Luke. Luke. Well, he's – and having a guy who can shoot the ball like that is pretty invaluable. The thing is the three years you in a row. Other guys, well, you've got other guys who are not going to get played off the court, right? And that's the thing about Luke is if he's not hitting threes, if you're face guarding him, he can't get from off. He disappears. He just yeah. disappears in the game, right? And you just can't have that, right? You can't have it. And so with that, you got guys like Vince. He's not getting played off the court. Gigi, who's not getting played off the court. Like you have all these guys who are more faceted. And if they negate that and then do everything else a little bit better, because Luke's going to be the best shooter out of all yes. those guys. Luke's going to be the best shooter as he can possibly have as a yes. backup wing spot. Yes. Undoubtedly. No one at is the same time. Me. At the same time, it's the only thing he does. And he's not getting those shots up. All these other guys that do everything else, it starts to matter a little bit more. So I hate to say it, but I, I think you're right. I've been really disappointed with his awareness of the of the moment or of the. If it was me and I was in his position, I would be like, "Well, someone's got to shoot the ball." Like I, I just don't know. I just don't. Dylan I don't Brooks. know why he. Yeah, yes, like pull pull it, Dylan, man. Go take you eighteen instead of like getting to eight and being like, Ew. like like I just I was I really was expecting him to when Ja and then when Bain were both going to be out and it was kind of, he was, I just expected him to shoot more and he didn't. And I, I don't think when, when it's like, you're talking about, you got guys not getting played off the floor who are also good at threes. They're not as good as Luke, but they're good. Like you just, it's such a good skill set to have. And he's second in the league this year. Like that's but top three. Okay. Half the time I'm like, dude, just shoot it from the logo. Like don't yeah. pass it to Jordan Goodwin. Don't pass it no. to Timmy Allen to shoot it from the logo. They don't, they don't need to that's they don't a better need to shot. Well, it's a better shot than what a lot of us can get. And I do want to ask you one thing, because this is the other thing that's been coming up a lot that I'm am very hesitant on. Dan Gigi is going to be the C factor for the Grizzlies next season, i.e., Andrew Wiggins for the Warriors title run. Hmm. I hear C factors, a couple of things. I do think that's really fitting. I also think that you wouldn't necessarily say Andrew Wiggins is the third best player for the Warriors. You got Steph. You got Clay, you got Draymond, and then probably Wiggins after that, right? Um, a lot of people would say Wiggins is better than Draymond, not for the Warriors, in, what, in my opinion. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about Gigi being the third or even second best player for the Grizzlies. I still am like, man, we got Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson. Yeah. Do you think Gigi's going to take that big of a jump because he's showing the potential to? Do you think that's where he lands? You think he's above a Dez and a Jaron? You know, it's tough because we've seen these guys doing it consistently now, like Dez and Jaron. Like we, we, they've got bodies of work at this point, at this, at this time. You know, whereas, yeah, the thing that wants me to say yes though is Gigi's nineteen and he's doing this. Like, I, I wouldn't. I couldn't do anything when I was 19. Like I couldn't do, I bear, I, you know, nothing. And this, it's really crazy to me because 19 year olds brains are just different, man. And like what he is, <laughs> like what, what he's able to do. It's just, it's like, I, I, I like, I want to say, of course, Des and Jaron are better, but then I'm like, but wait, the youths, the youths, man, he's not like, I don't, I don't know. He might, youth. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know what they do. Well, they it's one me. of those things where, I think we have seen Jaron dominate this year. And he has showed up for matchups that have punished him in the past. He showed up against Gobert, showed up against AD. I mean, he showed up against guys that normally have been pretty well dominating him in the past, right? Or for the most part, got better of him at least. Yeah. I think Jaron's still only getting better. And Jaron is young too. The other part of that is Gigi is still going to be 20 years old next year, right? Like he's still just going to be 19, 20. So there's – all I'd say, like, think about all the growth Jaron has done turning 24, 25. Gigi still has four or five years for that. So I hesitate to say – I still think you got Ja Des uh, – I was almost said Ja Des Bane. Ja Des Jaron. 
next year. When, G- I, when I Jesus is a grown never- man, when he turns like 24, 25, that dude is going to be out of this world. He's going to be insane. Yeah, I, I could see GG 100% being a multi-time all-star yes. when it's all said and done. I could 100% see him being a number two option on this team. Yes. Absolutely. Number one option, by the way, is John Moran. I was at this, so I was at this, uh, I was on this backcountry trip in Colorado, a bunch of these guys. Yeah, we went to the backcountry and like skied up mountains and stuff. It was a, it was a bunch of fun. I was the most tired I've ever been in my life. Are there but bats? a lot of these guys live in Denver, Fort Collins area. So they're a bunch of like Nuggets fans. I actually knew a lot about basketball, which is kind of fun for me. Sick. Um, and they all asked me what everybody asked, which is, what do you think about Ja? Because it's what everybody asks. Everybody, everybody asks it. Fan. You're not much fan. Yep. And the only thing I could say to them is, I think I've forgotten this dude's a top 10 player in the NBA. And mm-hmm. next year he's going to remind you. So, that is everyone, again, we're talking about this. Dude, John Moran, when he comes back next year, we already saw what he did this year in just an eight-game span. Just be excited. Game, tonight is like tight or so commonplace this year. It can seem so hopeless. My dad's sitting there, and he's like, I just don't know, man. Maybe they've lost some momentum. And I'm like, just wait until John Moran plays basketball again. We're going to be so all right. Go. All that to say, bad. John Moran's the only one that I think you can't surpass as far as the best players on a team. Pretty, pretty dang bright future. Um, mm-hmm. Anyways, GG, any, anything else on him? Anything else on this game with these guys? Because, I mean, it's we can sing his praises all year, and it's just one of a few bright spots we've had. I mean, these dudes are – I mean, Grant, I don't think Timmy Allen and what's the other guy's name? The Jack White – I don't, I don't not know. If, no, not, not the, not the guitar guy. I don't though, I don't know if those guys are long for this world. I mean, not like in real life, but like for, for this team, I just like, I, but the fact that they didn't suck, I don't know. I mean, I just think it's, we're supposed to be, I, I did on my show this morning and just talked about how we were going to get our asses kicked tonight. Like destroyed. <laughs> like, like, I, like, it's all I talked about. I, I like broke it down. How we we're going to get beat. You beat, you beat really bad, bad, bad. And this is one of the most exciting games I've like of the past couple months. It was just really, it's just, it's the players that I wasn't expecting. You know, I like, do you remember David Roddy, Nate? Do you remember David Roddy? Oh, why you do that? Why'd you say I that? just, cause I, cause I forgot why about him. And I did. I kind of had a moment where it was like, I have forgotten about him until yesterday. He was on this team. I'll never forget. I'll never forget him, David Roddy. <laughs> never forget. What's wrong with you? It's just, we were talking about him and now we're like, Jake's getting 30 regularly and defending everyone. <laughs> like it is weird. <laughs> it's weird, man. It's real weird. It's weird. Makes me feel it's weird. weird. And it makes me sad. You know what else is weird is uh old boss man getting in here and talking about how much he loved you. Oh boss man's in the comment section. We can all stay in the comment section. And while you're in the comment section, we appreciate y'all hanging out tonight. Make sure you hit the like button if you're here. A little bit of love. Um, but regardless, seriously, appreciate everyone being here in the comment section. This has been the engine that made this show go all year long. That's just me. Yeah. There's a lot of nights where uh, we uh, may have rather been doing something else. Um, but uh, this truly become like an entire family here in the comment section. And it's uh, made the show worth doing. And so stick around. We're going to be right back here in a second. We're going to keep it probably a pretty short show after this. Not too much to talk about as the season starts to come to an end. But make sure you stick around. We'll be back right after this little break. What do you think is more of a priority for this team? Because you're starting to hear a lot of rumors coming out about teams that are willing to make trades. I'm a big wing guy. This is Memphis. We barbecue and, and wing city. So <laughs> I also understand the importance of big men. The best players in the league are all bigs. If you're making a player in a lab, absolutely mm-hmm. you want to build a Paul George player. You want to build mm-hmm. the big wing. You know, Kevin Durant, whatever. Like, um, G.G. Jackson. Yeah, or Gigi Jackson, which actually I was thinking about. Well, what about Gigi, Anthony? Um, But unfortunately, those guys aren't out there. And like, even when you start naming specific names of guys you want to get, like the the quality drop off goes down quick. I do think the Grizzlies' easiest avenue to immediately improving next year and getting on the cusp of of like being, you know, like a Western Conference finalist, or maybe Mm -hmm. if you get all the great. Uh, breaks going your way is is improving your center spot just because mm-hmm. but there's just more of those guys i feel like available to right. help you out tune in to the anthony sane show wednesdays and fridays at 12 p.m weekly on the bluff city media youtube channel
Welcome back to the Grizz 901 post game show. One of two shows left in the season, a uh, somewhat long season. Normally, we'd be a little bit sad about this, but uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm looking forward to putting my, my pod gear away for a little bit. The camera even didn't even show up for the last show. The camera was like, out. I'm done. So, um, with that, Luke, I was telling you a second ago about this backcountry trip, right? And so, for <laughs> anyone who doesn't know, backcountry skiing. Essentially, it's what you do is you take if you have a board, you can split into two or you take skis, you put something on them called skins. You put these skins on and what they do is they let you go literally up the side of a mountain, not completely vertical, but pretty steep locks in and you can kind of pull up the mountain without slipping down and sliding down. Right. And so it's it's a pretty cool little thing. And like yeah. we hiked five and a half miles in, took us five and a half hours. That's uh, for you mapped out one mile per hour. So um took us a long time, <laughs> but it was still a ton of fun, had a blast with it. And then what you do when you get top, you have to get your setup ready, right? Like those skins yeah. can't go down the mountain. That's part of why it's set up. And what that is called when you're doing it is transition. Speaking of transitions, pews, you know pews from flower shops to commercial landscape maintenance. Pews still has been around it. for 30 plus years servicing the south. But did you know that pews also does residential lawn care? Pew's Residential Spray can take care of all your weed control and fertilization needs. If you want to get that perfect weed-free lawn, they call Pew's Residential Spray today for a free estimate. 901-633-2118. And let them know that the Grizz 901 crew sent you. And remember, with Pew's, you get big company strength, small company values. King of transition. Back at it for one more time this season. Luke. That was good. That felt A+. Plus. Was it A+. Plus? Dude, it was like, I was so enthralled by your story too. And when you said views, I thought you were finger gunning me. And I was just really, it was really good for, I was, I was having a good time. And then it was just King good. Transition, was, Daniel, take notes. One time you might actually be as good as me, but King Meeks coming with a rare, serious question. King Meeks is normally just talking about trying to wrestle Zaire out of town, but tonight, hashtag ask Luke, would you rather coach the Grizzlies to an NBA championship or be a good role player that helps them win? I would rather be a good role player that helps them win. Yeah, I I think unequivocally that's the answer. I have, as someone who has played in one and coached in one, there's just nothing quite like playing and winning. It's just, it just, it blows it out of the water. Now, I will say there is a weird satisfaction with coaching. It's kind of like, yeah, especially if you start out with not a great team that's meshing really well, and then you see them kind of click as the season goes on, that's a pretty cool satisfaction. That being said, when you're the one on the field doing it, you know, we hear all the time players decide games. Well, man, I it's love, man. Time. Like, I think there's something awesome about like getting all this, getting all this recognition, but really not having to do much, you know, like I shoot. It's like the backup quarterback's the best job in the NFL, you know, that kind of deal, you know, like I'll, if I can have one really good skill set and just hone that sucker in, like, shoot, I don't care. Well, I'm just happy. I got invited. And- well, and it's kind of like, you know, poor Taylor Jenkins. We have not – I've oh, been far from I've, saying this is a perfect Taylor Jenkins season. At the same time, when dude, well, when the dude draws up a wide open three and it gets clanked, it's kind of like <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's not much you can do. You know, it's, it's good coach, bad coach, right, is if that ball yeah. goes in or not. And so um, that part can be a little bit mind-numbing. So uh, Chris also joined in here asking what the hell Bro, I told you, you have on Ohio tonight. Lady Hoopers, Ohio Lady Hoopers, Fall League, baby. Hoopsters, by the way. Hoopsters. I got it at a, at an <laughs> antique store. I feel like changing Hoopers to Hoopsters is slightly feminine. So I think that the, the, the Lady Ballers does make sense. But Lady um, Hoopsters. Chris, if you weren't here at the beginning, I asked the, the same exact question of Luke. It looks like you're in an 80s workout video. Wristbands. The wristbands. <laughs> Everything really does it for me, man. Um, I was ready to play basketball. Yeah, I um, I, I, been I pulled up. my hamstring a couple of weeks ago, um, and then I went on this trip anyways, which was maybe not the wisest. Hmm. But um, I have been getting into the gym a little bit more than I have the past few years because yeah. we got a gym with the new apartment complex. Oh, amen. And so uh, I am going to give Daniel Greer buckets whenever I get back to Memphis. I told him it was a plus. I intend to keep the promise. And I agree. You do look like you play for the average Joes. <laughs> That's exactly I what like I dodgeball a lot. I like dodgeball. The movie and the actual the sport, it's fun. I like them both. <laughs> the dude with the, the glasses that's like regulation ABC. Oh, yeah, the, that's yeah, he's like right now. His next and then he, 
full rage. <laughs> yes, that's exactly yes. who you look like right now. Do you like going to the gym? You you said you go you got a gym now. Do you like gyms? Like, do you actually like lift? Like, do you enjoy the the act of it? Because because I think it's oh, one of the worst things in the world. I go to the gym all the time. It's, it's despite what it look like, my nerdy voice make it sound like. I actually am a bit of a gym rat. I hit the gym quite a bit. I was talking about a basketball gym specifically. We have oh, here. so that's the new part. Oh, the gym, gym. I, I thought you meant a gym. gym. I hate gyms. Yeah, like working out gyms. Hate them. Yeah, I uh, used to, and then uh, I got made fun of in high school, and uh, my demons came out, and therefore I I like to hit the gym. But um, that's probably not the healthiest reason in the world. Now I'm just trying to scale look good. But uh, I do have to ask you. <laughs> So sweet. I, I thought mean, you were just going to stop at you look good and then you said feel good and I realized it wasn't right. a compliment, but I decided to go with the compliment anyways. All right. <laughs> so we got one game left in the season mm-hmm. against the Denver Nuggets. That didn't really matter for either team, I believe. I think the Wait, Nuggets did, sort of have their spot secure. Who did, did did OKC win tonight or did they lose? They're playing. They one. So the OKC, okay, so yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So then. If Denver won and, and them and the T Wolves lost, Denver te- wouldn't be playing for anything next year. They would have clinched tonight. Well, and honestly, it doesn't really matter that much to the Nuggets, if I had to guess. I don't think the Nuggets really care if they're playing any of Phoenix, Lakers, Sacramento, Golden State, or Orleans. <laughs> the, all to those teams care out. if they're playing them, but but I don't think the yeah. Nuggets care. <laughs> well, the Nuggets, the only thing they might try and do, um, if you, yeah, actually, I don't think that matters to them either. Because then at you, that point, they're either playing the can Wolves. I ask? The only team I think that they might try and not play is the Clippers. But at this point, the Clippers are locked in at 4-5, which means that they're going to play the winner of that 1-8. Right? That's, I'm pretty sure that's how that bracket plays out, um, if, I had, um, if I remember correctly. Right? If you were OKC, would you have thrown tonight's game? Maybe in sh- making sure you get the three seed and get New Orleans in the playoffs as opposed to whoever comes out of the play in. I don't think you can do that as a Thunder. Personally, if you're a young team and if, you, if you're the Nuggets and you're I agree NBA you. champions, who cares? You, you can't whoever you not. Play. Yeah, you play whoever you have to play. You've won it. You've been there. You are the big bad wolf. Like yep. You don't worry about anything else. If yep. you're the Thunder – you don't want to give any kind of ground. It's like, hey, we want to play. We want to be clicking. We want to be vibing as soon as we go in this. Think about, man, we, we're we ready to rock and roll. Um, so I think it's a little bit different. And I would say, no, you don't want to throw any games. If you're, or say, no, you're the world, right? I agree with you. Um, the other part of that is the play-in really mixes that up, right? Like the play-in God, makes I, a huge difference because it's like you might end up playing – Phoenix, are you might end up playing LA, which I've never been a big believer in the Phoenix thing. I've said it since they made the trade in the offseason. Never been a huge believer in it. That being said, you're still playing against Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and Bradley Beal. Like it's a little less scary, but because I said really? that, he'll probably be. be. Um, Grayson Allen shooting the hell out of the ball too. As much as I would say I'd be worried if I'm LeBron and AD and having to flex on Jake LaRavia and get a fishing help to beat the Grizzlies, um, at the same time, it's still LeBron and AD. Yeah. If you're the Wolves, if you're the Thunder, you that's know. something to worry about, right? I want, I so, want to um, but at the same time, you might end up playing Sacramento. You just don't know where you're end up playing, right? And so yeah, you kind of just got to roll with it, play it out. Have you take care of what you can take care of, not worry about who you're playing. No, those teams are really good. volatile too. All those play in teams, like, is, is Draymond going to punch somebody? Is you know, like, is like what's going to be is the, the big three in Phoenix actually going to be playing? Like, there's question marks around all those teams. Like, Sacramento's yeah. going the wrong direction because they got so many guys hurt at the wrong time. Like, it's it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a mess down there. <laughs> I know the sack thing, I looked up and I just couldn't believe they were a nine seed. In my head, I just was like, oh, that's a top 16. And I just – I was shocked. I was shocked. Now, lucky for them, uh, they have no worries about getting knocked out of playing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no worries about that. Unfortunately for them, they got to play the team that beat them for in that 9-10 game most likely. 
Um, Cause I have a feeling that uh, LA is going to make sure they hold on to that eight spot. Um, all that to say, Denver, I don't anticipate them caring too much about this game coming up. Maybe they do. I would anticipate they don't mind being a three seed because they would just as soon play um, two seed going into the next round as they would the Clippers. Right? I just I think you want to miss the Clippers if you don't if you can. Um, that being said, I don't think Vegas really care who they miss. I think they think they can beat anyone. And by the way, they can. I oh. would want to miss them and Luca. I don't trust Luca. Uh, he scares me. Maybe. He scares me. I think he is the second best player in the NBA, probably. Yes. But yeah, I guess that, that might be uh, jumping the gun a little bit. I'll have to say, next game, to be honest, I don't really care about. Um, I hate that I'm going to miss it because I do want to watch the last game of the year. Unfortunately, I can't. Um, but I do want to ask you, we'll get to the Grizzly things to wrap it up. As far yeah. as this goes to the playoffs, that's going to be the basketball that's left. What are you looking forward to most out of some of these matchups in the playoffs or individual players? Just generally speaking, what are you going to be looking at in the playoffs? You know, for all the crap the East is getting, I'm excited to watch the Magic play playoff basketball and the Knicks to play playoff basketball because I like both those teams a lot. Yeah. I like a lot. They've been, me and Daniel were talking, they're fun. They're, they've been really fun to watch. And, yeah. and I, I, it's nice to root for the Knicks when Randall's not being a little little turd because I love Jalen Brunson. I like all those. I like Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, Isaiah Hartenstein. I like all these guys. It's mm -hmm. and Orlando's just fun, man. Like they're fun. They're they're a fun team to watch. I love that they're still really good on defense. They're, they're like we're still gonna play this way. It's gonna win us games. I'm just I'm excited for new blood in the playoffs. Like it's gonna be really cool. That's what's fun about the East is a bunch yes. of like new kind of what's going to happen type matchups. I mean, yep. that um, that New York Albert Pacers matchup is yeah. going to be super interesting, right? Because the Knicks don't have all their players, but I think they got the will to beat that team. And they got Tibbs, and I think that's going to help a little bit. You know, Carl's a good coach as well. But same time, I think that they got Tibbs. Um, yeah, man. All that. This, did you watch the Knicks-Celtics game? on national television uh, a couple a day ago yesterday I think it was yesterday no mm. dude i talked myself right back into mitchell robinson right back into it <laughs> come on <laughs> come on dude he's an come offensive on. he was just a rebounding machine just dominating the paint and i was like just imagine that guy playing next to john moran it was just awesome i just loved it but um, you got you just got a taste of it and you needed it back <laughs> Oh, I was like, oh, God, I need it. I need it. Um, put it into my veins. Um, but I think it'll be fun watching that team play. Um, I think without Randall, they're going to be just slightly undermanned against the best teams. That being said, the Celtics have proven that they are beatable, if nothing else. The Bucks seem to be very vulnerable right now, very hit or miss. The East is... There are some teams that are better than others. All those teams have the potential to falter. So it's one of those things where I would still expect Boston or Milwaukee. 100% I would still expect one of those teams to win it. Every single one of those teams has the potential to stumble. So we'll see what happens. It, it'll be really interesting. The one I'm forward to most out of the East, you know, it's a little bit weird. I'm looking forward to that 7-8 game. I am praying it's Philly in Miami in the 7-8 play-in game. Oh. I was looking at Sarah, uh, my wife, and I was sitting there yeah. and I was like, and she has no idea. She's reading the book. And I just see the pop up seven, eight. They're not even talking about the six or seat. And just in my out loud myself, I'm like, that game's going to effing war. Yeah. I was like, I, I, if I don't watch a single other game in the entire playoffs, I'm watching that seven, eight game. So I, like, there's a chance, there's still a chance that Orlando or Indy could drop down and the Sixers could jump up. I'm praying that it's a seven eight because I so badly want to see that. I want to see that game eight, so bad. If that's a seven eight, do you think the the nine and ten the Hawks and the Bulls just feel awful about themselves for being the same matchup two years in a row? Because they suck. Um, oh, listen, I yeah, I mean, I think I think either one of those teams is beatable. So I think if you're the Hawks or the Bulls, you still have a chance of getting in there. Who do you hate? Who are you scared more between those two? Who would you not want to see between the Hawks or the Bulls? Because they could go on a deep run. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like Kobe White. 
That's not a real question. Yeah, no, it's um, not. It wasn't a real question. Neither one of those. <laughs> I would be, despite all the sort of misgivings I have about Boston and Milwaukee, I would be shocked if the Bulls or the Hawks were able to give them any trouble at all. I, it's, yeah. I guess maybe the Hawks, question mark, just because – is Trey Young playing again? This tells you how out of the NBA. No, I, no, I don't think so. He's out. Um, I, literally, I haven't seen anything in the NBA until yesterday yeah. for two weeks. So I don't, I don't know. Oh, well, um, there's a rumor that he got hair plugs or something like that because he's always he's been on the sideline with like something over his head, like a like a like a um, cloak. There's another um, TMZ thing I don't give two shits about. But um, at the yeah, same good time, man. good for him. He needs it. <laughs> um, he does need it. His hair's awful. Honestly, yeah, I'm not worried about that 9-10 game. I don't care about that. The 7-8 game, if the Sixers jump up and the Magic or the Pacers fall through, I'm going to be so disappointed. I need that 7-8 game. So, yeah. Magic, Powell, Tyrese, Pascal, I need you guys to show up and show out for these next Please. couple games. And those are teams that will be playing this, right? They need to try and get into that six spot if they can, right? The top six, sorry. Um, yeah. That being said, I so want it to be Philly, Miami. God, that would be awesome. Um, and then in the East, I do think I'll watch the majority of the East matchups. Um, just because it's interesting. Like you said, it's kind of wide open. There's teams that should win it and should be better. At the same time, you don't know for a fact it's going to happen. So I'm very interested in the East. I'm bitter about the West. Like I'm, I'm just bitter. You know, I'm excited to watch Denver play, and I'm really excited to see this Mavericks team. I think it, I, I just, I've always been so intrigued by what Luca would look like if he had an actual, full complement of an NBA team around him. And it's, yep. I just, it's, it's just really good basketball to watch. It like at the end of the day, because he's so stinking good. Well, and kudos to them. They found a way to make the Kyrie Luca thing work. And so yeah. I said at the beginning of the year, if the Mavs were anything other than absolute dog water, Luca should win the MVP. And I stand by that. I think Luca has put up MVP numbers. I think Luca should win the MVP. I, and you can say he's a five seed, so he's a bottom half seed for the conference. I don't care, man. That dude, would, there is that that team would be the absolute dumps. They'd be the Washington Absolutely. Generals. The, the the Washington Generals. That's who they would be. The team the Globe Trotters play. They would they would be so bad. Like if, yeah, if, if it would it would be it it'd be terrible. It'd be terrible. But they're not. They're in the playoffs. They've won fifty games, which is a five seed this year. But in the past has been much higher than a five seed. Right. Um, I think it's awesome, and I think that series, yes, could be really interesting. Mm -hmm. keyword could be it's yeah. all dependent because i think that the i think the clippers are pretty awesome i think the clippers are better than a four seed or typically yeah typical four seed they're confusing man because i still don't they had they were so good there and i like a lot of pieces they have but i also don't like james harden really at all and i like paul george but and I like Kawhi, Kawhi, you know, that's someone who who should be included in the MVP conversation too. Kawhi is playing pretty, pretty incredible. You know, like, oh God, that's going to be a good series. That's going to be good. That one's I, locked in, right? Is that locked in as the four or five? Yes, I believe it is. Um, there Let's may go. be a chance that Dallas could fall back to the six, but I'm not, I don't think it's mathematically possible. And if it, even if it is, that's highly unlikely. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think that series is going to be a war. Um, I watch any series that involves Nikola Jokic. Um, yep. And then I am interested to see what happens with OKC and the Wolves, right? I'm, I'm very interested yeah. to see what happens there. Um, Cat just coming because, back. Yeah, just because it's teams who have sort of hit the stride that the Grizzlies hit the past couple yeah. of years, right? It's like yeah. um, the Grizzlies did it a lot faster than the those teams did but they kind of started putting it together bringing it together so i'm very interested to see what they're able to do that um and it's kind of fun they have really good players like sga as much as i think that the hype over john morant of an sga and an anthony edwards is um jumping the gun to say the least um, i'm gonna say gross really like 
Gross. really good, exciting young players, right? And so you want to see if they're able to do. Um, so should be a lot of fun. New Orleans, I really care less about. Um, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care. I'm completely <laughs> honest. I never yeah. believe Phoenix thing. Everyone hates the Lakers other than people from L.A. Um, mm-hmm. Sac, it just feels like they kind of – and you, they lost and Malik Monk and Kevin Herb both. Yeah. You can't. It's yeah. Tough. Kind of like everything went wrong at the worst possible time for them. Yep. So um, that Golden State uh, has been kind of weirdly yeah, showing know. up, but then they can't seem to sustain it, it feels like. So really, it's just a handful of teams. Um, I think I'm looking forward to the four or five matchup individual things i'm looking forward to with like ant and sga yes. as a whole i'm much more intrigued by the east i think the east is going to be a lot of fun because i said that the west will be more fun i, I mean I, the west is going to go through denver and it, and it might not be fun at all <laughs> you know you know it might just be it might just be a march to get killed by yoker and that's okay i'm okay with that <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like if we just want to line up for him to kill him let's go for it <laughs> Well, another thing is there's still a lot to be decided with only a couple days of regular (laughs) season NBA action left, right? There's still a lot of moving and shaking that can happen. Um, For the most part, everything's set, though. Again, I think that um, that East matchups are going to be the most fun. And uh, more than anything, again, I want the Philly-Miami play-in game. I just want that to happen more than anything. That will be my best playoff moment, if I had to guess. I see that. I think the game that game will be better than either of the series that those teams go to after that. Like that game itself will be awesome because yeah, I don't think dude, the 76ers it, are going to be t- he, like Joel's huffing and puffing. All, like he's not there yet. Miami's weird. Like with I, those would be weird series, but for one game, hoops, man, it's going to be some good hoops. <laughs> should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun. All right. Last thing to wrap it up, I do want to just ask one more thing because uh, I think it is pertinent to what we got to go into. Mm. But before I get into that, shout out to our last sponsor, but who has been here since day one, Heaven's Healthy Kitchen. Truly, comment section, we talk about how it makes the show go, how much you guys mean to us. Truly become like family at this point. Heaven's Healthy Kitchen, Chef Smith has been in here since the very beginning. And he is dedicated to providing good, healthy alternatives to people. And he's Memphis born and raised, now based in Huntsville, Alabama. Heaven's Healthy mm-hmm. Kitchen, for anyone who isn't an OG of the show, has been here. Grassroots business that was started right in Memphis, Tennessee. Chef Smith is a Memphian that promotes healthy eating and wellness. And if you're looking to cook at home, Chef Smith Cookbook is available on Amazon and can be downloaded today. Heaven's Healthy Kitchen also continues to do a lot of my pop up So I'm not sure where that is um, at this point. I'm not sure. I think maybe it just happened to pop up. Chef Smith, if you're in here, let us know if that just happened um, because I know that pop-up was an April pop-up. But make sure that no matter what, you go and check out Heaven's Healthy Kitchen at www.orderhhk.com. That is www.orderhhk.com. And they serve and cater all plant-based and vegan gourmet food straight to you. Again, if you haven't seen it, Daniel ate like seven of these meals on the show it's and awesome. then continued to eat them after the show at like midnight. So wrong, Chef man? Smith does an awesome job, OG fan of the show, OG part of this family, and has been a part of Toll sh- Shenanigan that we put together. And again, promotes really good eating, mint being born and raised, based in Huntsville. Make sure you go check him out. Dude is an absolute beast and provides awesome, awesome food. Seriously, Daniel gained a couple of extra pounds, and it was healthy food. Couldn't help. It matters us. what you eat, man. It matters. Turns out, it matters. It does. I had a uh, not such great food for me tonight. I had some jambalaya, and it was a. Uh, mm. um, got back to my Cajun roots, but it was also, <laughs> and I've been feeling mm. it the entire show. So, um, <laughs> shout out to King Geeks. Appreciate the love. Great job on advertising tonight, Daniel. Yeah. Take notes. One day you can be the king of transitions, perhaps. But last thing I want to say to wrap it up, because again, this is my personal last show. Luke, I imagine it's the last time you're coming on the post game show, even though we'll talk a little bit more about daily grind here in a minute. But as, is- as Grizzlies go, yeah, Grizzlies off season, next season, trades, drafts, just getting this roster going as season starts this year. What are you most excited about from month now or from now? 
until we start the season next year. And just in seeing John Moran play basketball is a viable answer. Uh, that <laughs> I, I really, I, that's the answer, man. Like I went back and looked at the games he played this season. It's I'm, I, it's, I want to, I miss, I miss seeing him play. I, I, and I think he's going to be more special when he comes back. I don't, I, I'm, I can't wait. That's it. I, I mean, I don't care about the draft. I don't care about, so, I mean, I care about summer league. I care about the draft, but like, I'm, I want to see John Moran on a basketball court. Yeah. I think that's, that's probably not number one. Right. I mean, again, yeah. we talked about those guys this past week. I was like, he's a top 10 player in the NBA. And people have just <laughs> forgotten how good he is. Um, that's number one. I will say. You're like a part I B. I give you a part B. <laughs> Well, you can't – no, you don't have to give me a part B. I was just going to say that on top of that, like, seeing – again, I, I was watching that Celtics-Knicks game, and I'm watching Mitch Robinson just kind of dominate the paint, right? I'm not yeah. – I'm not even sure what his stat line ended up being, but I was sitting there watching it, and I was just like, man, this roster being complete is what I want to see. Because we yeah. talked about it this year. You're missing Ja. You're missing Clark. You're missing Adams. Then you miss Smart. Then you miss Bain. Then you miss Sabanti. And then you miss – I mean, 13 out of 15 plays. Jitty, so, Jitty. Anyway. <laughs> Jitty's another one. Like, literally, you miss basically everybody on the team expected to play this year. Um, we just never get to see that roster really come together, right? And as Austin Moore is saying in here, good health for the whole team, yeah. right? Like, I so badly want to see the roster play out, right? I just really want to see the roster play out. And – um I think the center situation is going to get resolved. That draft pick is going to give them a lot of potential options. So if you want to go with the Klingon, you're going to have the option to do that. Most likely, who the starting um, center is is my number two. I think that's I'm really excited. If, if that is someone we go, it's just like you said to to make the roster whole. I don't even want to see right. him play any. I just want to see a full team of people who are supposed to play at these basketball positions because we've not had everybody. Adams got hurt. No center. You know, we just don't. We're, we're well, missing pieces. It sucks. <laughs> Well, and there's a lot of different options, though. I think that's what's yes. so exciting is that the Grizzlies yeah. have options. And that draft pick, as rough as the season has been, gives them a lot of options. If you want to draft a guy like Klingon, or I see Chris throw this around a good bit, you want to go get a guy like Drummond, and then you I draft Klingon, right? There's all kinds of options available to them. And then you got guys like Knicks, probably aren't going to keep Hartenstein and Robinson. You're going to have other guys on the market if you really want to spend big on a guy like Claxton, which I think is – very unlikely at this point. Yaka Pertle um, is probably going to be available for Toronto. Like, I mean, there's big serviceable bigs. <laughs> right. Like, and the thing is, you just, you need somebody who can do all that. Maybe even a Mitch Robinson, if you really want to like aim big. Um, a lot of options. And I'm very excited to see how that plays out. Um, there's a potential they draft another kind of guy that's a bench scorer, right? There's mm -hmm. all kinds of options available to them. So um, I'm very excited to see that come together and then have a year where we can answer all these questions, right? We can answer, um, is Taylor Jenkins the guy for the job, right? Because yeah. as much as I think we've been pretty fair on criticizing Taylor Jenkins this year, I also think it's one of those years where it's like, we can't say on Taylor Jenkins, right? Like yeah. You want to say he's the guy, I think there's a lot of questions. If you want to say he's not the guy, I'd say – he hasn't been given the shot to show that completely, right? And so there's there's a lot of different things available, and we get to answer a lot of these questions, and we get to contend. Like, this is a contention roster at this point, and we get to see that come together. So I'm very excited for that, personally. It, it, it feels, for the first time in a, in a few years, honestly, though, that the we can kind of the pressure is off just a little bit in terms of like, we got to get this, this done really, really fast. Cause I feel like the past couple of seasons, it's like big things need to happen. We're missing this and we're missing this with Gigi and Vince coming on like they did. And with everybody with trip and Bane getting better, it's like, we're pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Like, well, and it's, it's really interesting because they can do it around the peripheral. Yep. I, you bring a guy like Andre Drummond on, you just mm -hmm. bring a guy who's a, passable center i For think that's doable dollars. yeah i also think you could possibly go big game fishing and you could sit there and you could say hey we're actually going to make the splash this year and try and make something happen 
um, which I'm not saying they need to do. But what's exciting is there's a lot of options. And so we're going to have some months to kind of chill out. I know personally, all of this gear that I have set up for this, believe it or not, despite my fuzzy video tonight, we actually do put some effort into this show every once in a while. <laughs> um, so I'm excited to put that away for a little bit, sort of refresh, regroup, and then come back for all those moves. But last thing, Luke, I want to hear about daily grind. So daily grind, <laughs> you're still going to be doing it, even though the season's yeah. wrapping up? So yeah, the goal is, so the goal is going to keep doing it through the I, i've been trying to introduce more non-basketball related stuff just because i mean there's non-basketball stuff in everyone's life and otherwise how the heck are you going to keep a show going on every day i don't know it's tough <laughs> and if there's a slot that i don't have to worry about on any given day because it's fixed it's awesome and it's just it's i'm trying to have i want the summer to be fun i wanted all this to be fun because most summers as a basketball fan isn't fun because we just worry about our team and we worry about how they're going to be. And we search yeah. for news like crack addicts on the internet. Um, and it's, <laughs> you're just like, what happened in the Grizzlies? And it's just, I, I hope this is something that will let people have fun just to maintain them through the end of the season. I probably will take like a month off. Maybe, um, maybe Nah, I don't do anything, but <laughs> I'm still, we're just going to have like fun. Like there's a, I need to have you on cause there's star Wars themed game. Yeah, there we go. I actually have been, I mean, you and me were texting, you just yeah. texted me about yeah. Krennic yesterday, and I was like, Krennic is man's a watching Rogue One. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to start on Krennic, man. That movie is awesome, and Krennic is just a little turd. He's like, oh, you, yeah, he's you would love this. I've had a bunch of flights lately, right? And so yeah. on my flight to Dallas, I watched A New Hope. On my flight back from Dallas, I watched The Empire Strikes Back. <gasps> on my flight to Denver, I watched the first half, first half of Return of the Jedi. And on the flight positive. back, remember, I finished it. It was a great Star Wars two weeks for me. So I would highly love it. Oh, it was, it was pretty awesome. And there was minimal bumps. And I think those things are flying metal death cages. So I was very excited. It was not turbulent. It's science. Um, it's science. Yeah, exactly. That's science for you. But we'll be back. I'll, I'll make sure I make it on the show. And are you doing it truly every day still? Is there mm -hmm. a few? Days? Monday. Um, and we're going to be bringing, I'm going to have set guests every like days of the week. I know um Rusty of the Two Bucks Sports Show is going to be with me every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Drew's going to uh, Uncle Buck's going to be with me I think every Monday. I'm working on just calling on Fridays, maybe calling my random friends and seeing who picks up and see if they want to hang out with us on Fridays. <laughs> you know, it's just you're going to be able to count on like me and one other person being there every single day. Yeah. I'm trying to open up a Wednesday. I know we talked about that. I'm trying to make it happen. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh got the same reason I'm missing the game on Sunday. Got a kid on the way and uh Work actually matters quite a bit. Children, so, make you a better listen. life for yourself. I'm a I'm a big kid myself, so we're, we're trying to make ends meet at least. What but, name? Um, what names do you like? Oh, do not get into that conversation. I will put nothing into the public sphere on that. Are you kidding me? I like <laughs> I'm Floyd. so in trouble. I like Bjorn. <laughs> Bjorn is what I want to go with. And guess what? We're not going to go that's, with. That's the perfect name. Bjorn. Not an option. <laughs> Nothing I love is an option. <laughs> you like Tom Bombadil as a name? I do love Tom Bombadil, but there's way too much work for me to be able to get that one across. Um. Anyways, all right, we're gonna wrap up the show before we get too much into the the nerd weeds. Um, <laughs> so much for joining us, everyone in the comment section. Uh, we will have another show on Sunday. Daniel will be here. I'm sure we'll have another guest for that. This is my personal last show of the season cannot thank you guys enough this has been despite the bright spots despite the fun stuff an absolute drag of a season <laughs> it has been yeah. tough <laughs> to do this night in and night out and you guys made it completely worth it so love you all truly like family at this point thank you so much can't be can't even express how thankful i've been and i know daniel is coming in so Make sure to tune in on Sunday, and after that, we'll regress, we'll rest, regroup, come back for an awesome season next year. But for the last time this year from me, until next time, be nice, tell your friends. <laughs>